But today we have a fantastic interview. This is somebody that I have been wanting to talk to for a long time, and uh, we've gone back and forth with with schedules, and uh, he really came around, and, and uh, this is somebody you're going to love, uh, without a doubt. Uh, today we have none other than the actor that played uh, BJ Honeycutt on MASH, as well as so many other things. Can't wait to talk to him about it. Mike Farrell. So Mike, thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, without a doubt. It's just terrific. Uh, you know, I was a huge MASH fan. Well, I still am. But um, what, um, how, when I look at BJ, I'm curious, how much of the character is actually Mike Farrell? Oh, God. Uh, you know, it's it's a, it's an amalgam. Um, when you do a long running show, um, well, in in my case, uh, they didn't know it. What they knew about being, uh, I bet should back up. When I had the interview with them, when they were talking about it, and they weren't sure that Wayne was leaving. Oh, really? They, no, they at that point it was unclear. Um, but they thought that you know they had to prepare themselves because the whatever the negotiations that were happening were not happening to their satisfaction. Um, so they they made that very clear, and I said, "Look, I get that. I mean, I've been around the business a while. I understand." Um, but they said, but I said, but what, what I'm what I will tell you is I would not be interested in coming in if what you're talking about is the actor coming in to replace uh, Trapper John and to sort of step into Wayne's boots. Wow. And they quickly said, oh, cool. of course not. Oh, no, no. Well, that would be, you know, toward <laughs> the wrong step. Um, and what we have in mind is a character who is um, we've decided that would be married. And not be a womanizer like Trapper and John and, and Hawkeye, and um, would have a child at home. Um, how, how does that sound to you? And I said, "How does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds wonderful." I'm talking about uh, uh, somebody portraying a fidelity on national television, I think it's <laughs> like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, we laughed and talked for a while. And I didn't know. I didn't know if there was going to be a deal or not. Wow. How how far in advance are we talking before he left? Um, I, I, they called me the next week to do a test with Alan. Um, just to, They said, this is not about your acting skill. It's about whether or not you guys have chemistry. Fortunately, mm -hmm. it turned out we did. Um, and... As I recall, Alan called me that night uh, when the deal, when the agreement was made and said, can we have dinner? And I said, absolutely. Um, and we sat and talked till God, all, all hours of the morning about the show and about his view of it and his hopes for it. And um, he was just a wonderful man and, and, and really did a nice thing to me, uh, for me to kind of break the ice and let me get over my my fear <laughs> yeah uh about what was going to be coming up um and, I bet. yeah and then i think we went to work the next uh the next monday morning i'll be darn yeah so it was right down to the wire wow so were you and i i totally get it. i mean that just shows what an incredible human being alan alda is but um Look. Were you still nervous though about the idea of certainly you're not you're not replacing Wayne Rogers' character, but you're replacing Wayne Rogers, like in essence on the show. Was that still a bit nerve wracking for you? Oh, it was terrifying. Uh, what I knew was that uh, this show. I, there's probably a backstory to it. I, I so admired the show um, mm -hmm. that the the opportunity to become part of it was this phenomenal sort of dream. Um, because, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, the show was already up and going when I was, uh, when I was admiring it. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, what I knew from being in television for a while was that if this show crashed in its fourth season, I was going to wear it around my neck for the rest of my life. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I thought, oh man, is this... And I also had this, some concern. I mean, I knew just from reading stuff that uh, they had a very nice 
um, sort of interpersonal relationship and a kind of a family uh, on the set. And I thought, God, you know, what if the what if the crew and the company and the actors all think of me as a the, the an interloper? You know, yeah, this, yeah. This guy who bumped out their friend and knocked him off. And I thought, oh man, this could be terrible. And then, of course, once I went on the set and and everybody welcomed me graciously, and it was a that that was wonderful. Then we were doing season four. And wow, thought, you know. What if the audience hates me, <laughs> hates the new changes, hates the show? Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, and I remember uh, um, one of the actors came up to me after at the end of the end of the. Uh, I, I'm, I'm stalling here for a minute because I, I thought about it, it. I thought it was David Styers, but it wasn't David because David wasn't with the show yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the actors anyway came up to me and he said. Uh, look at the ratings take a deep breath and and, uh, and uh, you you've you've made it over the over the uh, t uh, touchdown line oh my gosh seriously that must have felt like such a, a relief off your back oh, uh, yeah no it was it was that you know what i said all these wonderful people and if i was the if i was the thing that torpedoed the show i would be drummed out of the industry i'm sure oh my gosh so did you um obviously alan alda approaches you and he, he you go to dinner yeah did you um have a relationship offset as well as onset oh yeah sure and and it's continued i mean it it, it started with his graceful uh you know invitation that night before mm -hmm. but you know the minute i got there first person i think that came up and stuck out his hand was gary Berghoff and said welcome we're happy to have you here <laughs> how, then, how ironic it's gary Berghoff, right yeah, then uh uh loretta and then jamie and then bill i mean it was just and larry um it was like you know a dream come true mm -hmm. uh, then as the work proceeded it became just so incredibly wonderful so fabulously warm and welcoming to me but also to challenging to to uh, you know be part of this company I'll, I'll tell you a brief story um please when i that first day um we sat down around the table to read the script which was you know i'd been in two television series and a soap before that and you didn't get that chance to sit down and read right so you, you just come in and hit your marks and start work start acting um so that was just a thrill i mean that was a treat to sit down and we read and gene reynolds who was directing it said uh, okay page one and we started reading and read through the script and there were laughs and jokes and you know some yeah kibitzing and then uh, at the end of it there was this round of applause for the writers and the what have you. Um, and then Gene said, okay, page one. And I, I thought, what? what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just did that. And 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 Gene said, he looked at me because I was right across the table from me. He said, oh, Mike, he said, uh, this is where we go back through the script page by page and see if any of you folks have any questions, any doubts, any problems, any oh, suggestions. Wow. And I thought, I have died and gone to heaven. These yeah. people, these people want to know what I think or what we think about the script. Wow. And I heard actors say, "You know, I think that joke would work better if uh, Father Mulcahy did it, if Bill did it." Um, it, it was just such a dream th that this extraordinary group of people that I came to understand was an extraordinary group of people were so generous and so um, determined to make this show the best show they could possibly it could possibly be that they were they were willing to you know bear their souls and give up good stuff and turn it over to somebody else or wow this little put this little twist on it that uh it, it was uh it, it was a wonder it really was and, and it and it just got more so over the years yeah it was like well as a viewer it's like watching a family the reason that 
the reason that I liked it, you know, part of why I do this show too, is I feel like a lot of people, I mean, the com comments that I get are often how much it made their day or it made them smile. It made them whatever. And I always felt with MASH, I could always go to that. And I felt like a warm, comfortable, cozy feeling. Like every time I watched an episode, it was like, oh, it's a nice little cozy escape. But I think it's what you're talking about, because um, if it meant that much to the actors and the, you know, the director, it comes across. I mean, there is a sincere warmth in that show. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it's, you know, it's something we felt, certainly. And I'm thrilled to hear that it, uh, that it and I hear it not only from you right now, mm -hmm. but I mail every day uh, that tells me about people whose lives were changed because of the show, whose relationships were m matured because of the show, uh, things that have happened for, with people and for people wow. and from people. Uh, it's just been such a gift. I can hardly describe it without bur bubbling into tears, which <laughs> right. you will do if you ask the right questions. <laughs> Hold on, I got to think of what I'm asking today. No. Hey, so tell me this: you, um, if I'm correct on this, Harry Morgan started at the same time you did, right? Didn't he come in on that season? He did, came in second episode, right? Yeah. Did you work with Harry previous to that, or did you know him? Had never met him, and I was awed by the idea of working with him. And we all were, I think, to some degree. And boy, he, as Alan said, he came down came in, sat down, took our hearts and uh, kept them. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Boy, never, never, there was never a moment where he was anything other than the person you know as Colonel Potter, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But this wonderful, generous, sweet, kind, very funny, well-educated man. Wow. Wow. He became a dear, dear friend. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Did was he pretty was he kind of like that character offset as well then? Or or was he a bit different? <laughs> yeah, no. He was a little gruffer uh, as uh, as as I told you, I feared that. Um a, a little gruffer as um Colonel Potter. But yeah, I mean he Harry was we 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 went <laughs> we went through a period where uh uh I, I guess it was Peter Sellers doing uh, ripoffs of uh, of uh, the, the the kung fu artist. Uh, oh, uh, Cato or yeah, Bruce Lee, was, whatever. Yeah. Bruce Lee, yes, uh, and where we would jump on each other, hi ya, hi ya, in the middle of a scene. You know, if we couldn't, so <laughs> if somebody was doing a scene and it was very serious suddenly a bunch of us would leap in saying oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the director would want to kill himself or herself um and Harry <laughs> joined the fun i mean he was just he was just one of the guys it was amazing oh, oh i'm sorry i could just picture that that's funny that is just funny um okay well that's pretty cool i love i love hearing that and then um the other thing too i you know speaking of that did you do pranks on each other on the on the set at times? You just I don't know. It just feels like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. I uh, uh, well, we did a show where BJ was the the, the mysterious uh, practical Joker, mm -hmm. and it was because I had been doing <laughs> doing those things all along. Well, you know, once I got comfortable, well, I didn't do those the first show, but <laughs> right. But once I was there and part of the company, and there wasn't any question about them throwing me out, I, I would. I used to tie Alan's boots, to, his <laughs> boots together. I used to. Uh, God, he, he he got on a kick where he didn't want to walk from, and didn't want to. But I mean, he he had to do a lot of things. He'd go to the writers' room, and he'd go to the this, go to the commissary. So he got a bicycle, uh, and he'd ride around the set on his bicycle, and he was just as proud as a peacock of that bicycle and uh, one day one day I got the uh, crew I said I want you to put a line on that bike and hoist it up into the you know we were in this huge sound stage way up there <laughs> and he, Alan said 
where's my bike? <laughs> and he walked around and he looked and he went, they said, I can't, uh, you, Mike, <laughs> you haven't done anything with my bicycle, have you? I said, why is it? would I do anything like that? <laughs> he looked at me and he looked up and he said, you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It was just, you know, uh, it was that kind of that kind of um, air on the set. Everybody was just having a good time, and oh, yeah. and, and knowing and appreciate. I, you know, we didn't always laugh. We sometimes we cried, but mm -hmm. we always knew that what we were doing was important to us, and. But I think it was my third season in, um, I was out, I do some political stuff and I was out in, out of the country and I came back, I had been really moved by people who came up to me and said, I can't tell you how much your war, your, your, your series means to us. We are people at war and, wow, and it is so important to us to know that there are people like you and your organization doing the kind of work you do. Well, I came back and I said to Alan on the set the first day of our starting production, I said, are you are you hearing what I'm hearing out there? And he said, yeah. He said, um, you know, all we can do is just realize how important this film, this this show is not only to us, but to a lot of people in the world and we and and it it behooves us to just double down and do our best. And we talked to the we we used to do that. We'd get together the the crew would get together the company would get together and and um, talk about issues and talk about our lives and talk about things that were going on. So Alan and I talked to the group and said, "This is it, it's urgently important for us to do this show to the best of our abilities and." Just make sure we don't, in some way, cheapen it. And, wow. And it, you know, I, I think the last day, uh, the day we shot the the last shot of the final episode, um, I, I said to somebody, I, you know, I knew this was a good show. I knew it was popular. I knew it was, God, you all had to do was read the ratings and read the... Mm -hmm articles and stuff but i didn't understand and 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 probably didn't actually on that day fully understand that it had become a social phenomenon mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't just a television show it was it was part of people's lives and made a, some statements that i think reaffirmed for people sort of the best parts of themselves mm -hmm. agreed that, that was um it was a big load for us to carry, but it was it was important, and not because we thought we were so hot, but because something about the magic that happened between the actors and between the writers and the producers and the audience that um, created a um, something that will never be repeated, I think. No, no, not at all. That, you know, that finale episode, which is famous as one of the most watched episodes ever, um, what was that day like? I mean, honestly, I mean, you know, people always think, oh, wow, it was an emotional, you know, for a viewer. But what the heck was that like as an actor? Hardest, one of the hardest jobs I've ever had. Uh, I remember Bert, uh, who was directing us uh, part of the scenes, um, said, this is, <laughs> this is the first time I've ever had to ask actors not to cry so much. <laughs> Wow. I carried a box of Kleenex tissue in my <laughs> under my arm oh. for the day, and Alan at one time he uh, pointed at it and laughed, and then shortly thereafter he came over and said, "Can I have some?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, got it was uh, Loretta carried one as well, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna think about those times and <laughs> and. Yeah remind myself yeah so, yeah it was it was um it was terribly hard the, the the decision to to end the show which is important to know was ours we uh really we, yeah 
yeah, we made that choice. Um, Alan and I were doing a scene one day uh, in the 10th season. And I said, how, how long do you expect this show to go? And he said, I always thought about 10 years. And I said, well, that's where we are. <laughs> wow. And, and he said, huh. And we went in and, as I described earlier, we went in and sat down and talked to the uh, other actors. And there was some disagreement. Um, but it was, we, we came to an understanding that it was best for the show mm -hmm. and best for all of us to, as I said to one person one time, we didn't want to ride the horse downhill. Right. You were at the top at that point. Absolutely. And we didn't want some network executive a year or two or three or four years later say, oh, ho-hum and pull the plug. We wanted, mm -hmm. uh, and what we said to them, we said, to, we went to Fox and they, <laughs> they were not thrilled, I must say. No, I'm sure they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> We, we went to them and said, look, we think it's we think it's time for the show to end. And what we want is an end of the show, ep end of the war episode. Oh, to wow. Bring yeah. it to a conclusion. And they said, oh, God, no, oh, no, you can't do that. And I said, really? <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> right. But we, we, we made it clear. And and, and we, uh, I mean, the, and the conversation went on. Then one day, one of the studio executives came down and he said look um we understand you guys want to end and we think it's time we we uh unhappily will agree we can do x number of episodes for an 11th season if you'll agree to that and um but we can't do an end of the war episode oh boy and i said why is that and he said well, you remember The Fugitive, the David Jansen show? Yeah. Oh, at the, when David wanted to end the show, he ended the story. He, he got, um, uh, he, he did the, found the one-armed man and got Dr. Kildare or whatever his name was. Uh, yeah. Clinton, and so he was innocent. So he, And it killed the show in syndication. Hmm. It was just as serious as he could be. And I looked at him for a minute and I said, you know, it might surprise you to know this, but uh, the Korean War actually ended. You <laughs> know that. <laughs> right. right. And he kind of looked at me and looked around at the rest of us, and we were all sitting there looking at him and smiling. And he got up and walked out of the room, and uh, they came back with an episode. They said, uh, we, won't, we won't do an end of the war episode, but if you would, if you all agree we will do an end of the war to our movie uh now <laughs> really yeah we thought that was great and yeah. we, and 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 it turned out to be a two and a half hour movie right um, but what i later understood was they would show it once and then maybe not for a long time because they didn't want to let the audience fear they out of their fear that the audience would go away if they thought the war was over and <laughs> oh is that unbelievable isn't that something it really is something i mean talk about not um understanding the viewer <clears throat> that is the epitome of it yeah absolutely and that's it's of course what's wrong with the business they don't nobody understands the audience you and are nobody, correct on that yeah nobody respects the audience and and we did and uh, i think uh, i think it it resulted in the relationship we had with the audience Oh, big time. I, I have another one for you, too. Um, the you, you know, you grew that mustache for the character. And I read on different things and different research. But really, I guess even after I was done, I was like, I don't really know if I got that answer. Why did you really grow it? Alan called me one day and he said, Mike, and I said, yeah, he said, they think we're too much alike. What do you think about growing a mustache? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> that was it oh that's funny that's really funny i mean i was reading stuff you know it was like it was this for the character and that for the character <laughs> it was that that's great um i should i should add my mother hated the mustache <laughs> oh seriously yeah yeah she didn't like it oh, i that's... said i'll shave it off after every season but <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. Classic mom, by the way. Um, 
So <laughs> what um your your first wife was also in the show. She played uh nurse Abel. Am I correct on that? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Judy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so did Judy, how did that come about? Like, you know, I mean, I realized she was an actress also, sure. but yeah. Judy's an, a writer and an actress. And oh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't realize uh, that. I think Bert, uh, I think Bert Metcalf said, uh, is your wife? One? And I said, I'm sure she'd love it. And uh, excuse me while I, <laughs> why not? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, she came over and met them and yeah, so she was a recurring nurse periodically, which was great. It was fun. Was it fun to to work together on the set? Like, you know, it was that oh, yeah. we were we were married through most of the show. Uh, mm -hmm. and we our parting was amicable, fortunately. So uh, yeah. We're still we're still good friends. That's great. That's great. So the other side of the coin is you go on, you write, um, I think it was five episodes. I think you directed four. At least that's what I, I saw in there. <clears throat> um, I can't keep track of them, but yes. Yeah. So um, first of all, what did you prefer being an, an actor or being a director? Uh, that, I guess that's the first part of the question. I liked, I liked, I liked being, being involved in the creative process um, I directed a movie separate from the show after the show was over. Um, I loved being a director. It came about because MASH, the experience of doing MASH, was, I always think of it as a creative community. And mm -hmm. it, started, it started on that day I told you about when Gene right. Reynolds was okay, page one. You know, if we had ideas, they were they welcomed them. And... Um, things came first things comes first one, one day i came to bird and i said i've got an idea for a show and he said i told him what it was and he said oh that's a good idea why don't you write it <laughs> wow and i thought you know because i had done some writing before that but i thought this is sort of high class writing for this show oh top of the line yeah, yeah. I thought, but he said look you know we've got a staff of writers and it'll you'll be part of the you'll get in there and you'll mix it up with them about so i did i wrote that's when i wrote the first episode and they were very generous and very helpful and we you know we moved forward from there so along that line a few years you know there were I was there for eight wonderful years. So wow. a couple of three, four years in, I said to Bert, um, I'd like to give the directing a shot. And he said, I think you should. And that was the first one. Oh my gosh, seriously, you've got to be kidding me. That it was that. Oh yeah. Well, oh, obviously no. they had a lot of respect for you, but yeah. <clears throat> well, no. I, 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 thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it was, uh, it was a, um, Mutual admiration society, I guess. Um, but I will say, <laughs> when I I think on the first one, I I directed um, uh, an episode that uh, I had written. And wow! We were setting up. Uh, we were setting up a shot, and I was looking through the lens, and I thought, okay. I said, "Who wrote this shit?" <laughs> I realized some of what I had written was visible and I didn't have to say it. And it was, you know, it's one, one of the things you learn. <laughs> oh, is that funny? Ah, that's great. <laughs> so, so did you, um, uh, did you find, did, how did, how did that feel to not only, I mean, I, I'm assuming you probably were in the episode as well. Is that right? The one that you wrote? Yeah. So you're in it, you wrote it, you directed it. What is that like to, see that all you know come together as this final product yeah it, well it's the final product you see your name on the screen you know written by directed by that's that to me is really exciting yeah uh, but when you're doing it you know you're focused you're doing you, you know what you want you know what you're looking for you get the opportunity to talk to these people and uh, you know, share your ideas with them. Yeah. Um, it's just thrilling. It's, it's, uh, it, it's really a wonderful part of this whole creative 
um, experience. You just, yeah. and I kept thinking, I did till the day we left and I did till today, how lucky I am and how lucky I was to be part of that. Wow. It's so great that you recognize that. I mean, seriously, I can't tell you just how many people have read about or whatever that don't always get it. They just don't get what a, what a gift that is, you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've run across some of them. Yeah, I imagine. I imagine. So let's, um, <clears throat> loved talking about MASH. I, I also want to know a bit about your background. Um, you, you know, you, um, I, I saw that you were originally born in St. Paul, but you, your family moved out to LA. Um, did you, it, it I, I saw you went to grade school with Natalie Wood? Natasha Gurdon. Yes. Well, yes. Do you, do you remember her from then? Oh God. <clears throat> I had such a crush on Natalie when I was, we were in second or third grade together. Wow. Grammar school. And, uh, <laughs> we were, <laughs> the teacher got us out of the class to go, to go, um, I don't know, to watch some, some assembly, I guess. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, she was in line. Oh, three or four people ahead of me. And one of the girls behind her and in front of me said, Natalie, Mike likes you. <laughs> I was mortified, of course, because I adored her. And she turned and she looked at me and she said, why, Mike, why didn't you tell me? Oh, my gosh. I mean, she had that kind of a point, even at that point in her age. In, in wow. Her uh, it was stunning to me. Wow. Stunning. And I, of course, <laughs> was dumbfounded, could say nothing. And right. Boom. And she moved on. She was, I, I don't think she went on even through grammar school in, she was probably on maybe being taught on movie sets for the rest of her, her child, child, child days. Wow. What a moment in time. Yeah. Gee. We, Did uh, we met um, later. Uh, I, I rented a place in Malibu for the summer months. Mm -hmm. She and uh, uh, Bob Wagner lived uh, just two or three doors down. And uh, we had kids and they had kids and our kids played together. And <laughs> I reminded her of that. <laughs> oh, how funny. That episode, yeah. She was very sweet. Wow, that's pretty cool. Talk about life comes full circle you bet. you bet that's pretty cool so the other side of it too i saw that you went to uh, hollywood high when when you were there um who were i guess some of the people that you know were so you know supposedly names or became names became names is more the case um mm -hmm. um uh I, my my wife is much better at this than i am um yeah John John Law, uh, mm -hmm. Tom, Tom, I knew his brother Tom mostly. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, John became sort of a flash and pan, big name, and then left and didn't hang around the business much. Um, <laughs> a woman named Taffy Paul, who hmm. was uh, Stephanie Powers. Became, oh my gosh, no way. That was that was her name <laughs> before? Yeah, we, we called her Taffy, and, and Paul was her last name, yeah. Oh, that's worked, so funny. Yeah, I worked with her on uh, the show she did with Bob Wagner as well. Um, later on, we have to talk about that. Oh, heart to heart. Is yeah. that what it was? Yeah. yeah. She's supposed to, by the way, she's supposed to come on the show possibly in April. Oh, great. She, yeah, Tell she, <laughs> we talked, but we'll see. We'll see. <clears> but uh, sure, sure. but uh, that's what she's planning on. So we'll see. That's great. Um, no, she'll have many, many stories. She's been through the business and God. Um, oh, yeah. And, and well she'll tell you the stories okay um and uh, donna i want to say donna larson is that right donna larson who was the young woman who was in on the on the beach with uh tony perkins oh 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 god oh god uh and she had a very short career i think and, and i don't know quite why but she was she was she was you know, an up and coming actress when when we were at, at Hollywood High, I was a a wannabe in my head. 
actor, but terrified of the idea of actually getting up and performing. So I was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I re I saw a story, which I don't even know if it was right at that time or not, that you said that I loved. And it was the one where you were a delivery man as one of your jobs. I think it was delivering groceries. And you, you said that you would deliver to Stars Homes, but there was an incident with Dorothy Malone. And I was like, wow, I can't, I can, like, could you mind repeating what happened? Not at all. Uh, yeah, I used to deliver, God, I delivered to Jerry Lewis and Tony. Uh, uh, God, there's so many. Uh, Tony I, Curtis? I don't know. Yeah. No, uh, 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 I'm, I'm, in, I'm embarrassed. I'm, I do these blanks on names periodically. I think we all do, Mike. I don't. I wouldn't worry too much on that one. <laughs> uh, but a great star. Uh, he became a great star and a great friend, Anthony, um, uh, the, the great Greek Zorba. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Anthony Quinn. Anthony Quinn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so it was, I, yes, I delivered. Uh, I, I worked for driving a truck and delivering groceries uh, at a at a store in. Uh, in LA, West Hollywood, that a lot of the people who didn't want to bother to go to the market <laughs> got their groceries uh, by calling up and ordering, and we brought them to their home. So I got went into the back doors of a lot of movie stars and television wow. stars. <clears throat> so Dorothy Malone, one of the most beautiful creatures ever walked the earth, wow, came into the kitchen when I was bringing her groceries in. And she was very sweet. And she said, I said, uh, I don't know if I said anything. <laughs> and she said, oh, hi, how are you? And I said, uh, I'm fine, thank you, how are you? And she said, uh, "What? Uh, something about, oh, I said, I think I complimented her on her acting. And she said, are you, uh, what's, your, what's your dream when you, and I said, well, I, I, I really, I really dream about becoming an actor. And she said, oh, yes, you should. Wow. <laughs> I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> I've, been blessed. I've been blessed by the Pope. <laughs> literally, literally. It's one of those moments. Yeah. You need that. You need that in those moments. That's wild. Yeah. Wow. When I think about it, you know, just so gracious, so sweet of her to do to even bother to say hello, but to, to be that that kind was really wonderful. Oh yeah, and to care. So you, um, I mean, I'm, I, I, there's so many areas with you, like where you could jump around, people that you worked with, but you spent, okay, so you ended up, um, I, I know that uh, your father passed when you were like 17. Mm -hmm. and And if I'm too personal on this, you let me know, Mike, but I feel like, I don't know, I'm, I've, I, Everything that I, when I hear you or I've read about you, it's like you went, you went into the Marines, you went to be an actor. I'm just wondering how much of that is, is also the difficult relationship you had with your father um, trying to, you know, kind of do the right thing, so to speak. It's a little bit of, yeah, I mean, you know, aren't we all the, the result? <laughs> oh yeah. No, I'm. Same way. Parents, but yeah, my dad was a tough guy and um, an Irishman, hard drinking, tough. He was not abusive in the sense that uh, we hear about today. Mm -hmm. He was not physically abusive, uh, except as he felt it was appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was emotionally, uh, he was a very sarcastic man, especially with me it feels like my, probably my brother and i and my sisters too but uh, i felt it of course um so there was always the kind of desire my dad was john wayne you know my dad was big and tough and irish and um, god i remember when i was a kid he'd come home from the bar on the corner half lit i'm sure um walk in the front door and say if the cops come i'm not home <laughs> Oh, jeez. I, I, I was deputized, you know. I had to answer the door if the cops came and just say, I'm sorry, officer, he's not here. Wow. Um, um, so that 
there there was that sort of legacy with him. You had to live up to being a big tough Irishman on the one hand, and you didn't want to. I I didn't want it when my kids were born. The last thing I wanted was for them to feel frightened of me uh, right. or or um, um, minimized, which both of which I think he was good at doing. Um, so my reaction to being my father's son was, as you suggested, I when I got out of high school, I lived up to being uh, the tough guy and joined the Marine Corps um, and tried to prove, you know, that I was capable of being a Marine. Wow. Uh, I, I, um, I, um, I can't even think of some of the things I did, but, you know, I survived in the Marine Corps and got lucky. Um, so yeah. Be- between two wars i before korea after korea and before vietnam Uh, although i was on a troop ship on the way to okinawa to the third marines in uh, 58 i guess it would have been Mm -hmm. and um the there was an announcement that we were circling we may be changing course wow um and the word came down that we may be going into a place called French Indochina. Oh, wow. Now known as Vietnam. Right. To uh, bolster the French forces that are having some trouble there. Oh, wow. That's too close. <laughs> it's very, very much too close. And then we got word, no, we should, we should move on. My dad, uh, my dad actually served in the Korean War. So I, it, uh, it was one of those, uh, Thing. So when you say that, believe me, I, I can I can respect that feeling that you must have had on that ship at that moment. Yeah. 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 I mean, your your life is not your own. Uh, you you you've given you've given them the right to do whatever they do with you. And boy, some of it is nasty. Oh, yeah. 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 The So you come back and you're you're uh, you decide. Well, actually, I don't know if you do. You, you want to be an actor, but it's interesting. Um, what? <laughs> I guess that's the other one I was trying to figure out is like, when do you actually say, you know what, I will be an actor because I felt like there were a lot, there was a a period of time in there where it was kind of like, well, that's what I want to do, but I'm not doing it. What happened? Well, I lived, you know, I lived in, in West Hollywood, California. This was the heart of the, of the motion picture industry. I go to the store and I'd see people from the movies and television. And I, I, I wanted it but was terrible. I, I couldn't stand up in high school and speak in uh, in English, cl- in whatever the class was where you're supposed to stand up and speak. Really? No, I was terrified of the idea. I was very, very shy. Um, thanks again <laughs> to my dad. Uh, yeah. But um, I, I, I nursed this dream and I was... Uh, <clears throat> I, I will say this carefully. I, I, when I was working driving the truck, I was walking down the street to catch the bus to go home, and a man stopped his car, which was not unusual in West Hollywood at that time, mm-hmm. and said, uh, w- would you like a ride? And I said, sure. Uh, and uh, that kind of thing. When I was in high school, I used to get rides from gay men who would want to um you know give a guy a lift and at the during sometime during the lift they'd say are you interested in and i'd say no and they'd say okay and i'd get off out of the car yeah yeah you know, it's so a ride I, yeah. saved, I saved car fare that way right uh, anyway this guy said would you like a ride and i said sure and he said does some version in the conversation as we're driving down toward where i got off um got out he said uh uh are you I don't know if he asked if I said I had sort of dreams of being an actor and by then it was you know after the marines and I'm buffed and ready to go and yeah he said well give me a call sometime and he gave me his card and he was an agent and I got I was very excited I thought well gee this is cool and this is a big 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 break right there yeah Without, you know, any sense of what was required of being an actor. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
I remember my I had an older sister and she said, Oh, Mike, uh, be careful, man. This is not and I so I thought well, don't, don't. so I called this guy and he said, Listen, um I could get I can get you an interview for a you're in, uh, you, I, I don't know if I told him I was in the service or whatever. Yeah. You were an ex Marine. Yeah, I can get you an interview. I have a feeling it was with Hal Wallace. I don't remember, but he was whoever it was was, it was huge. Yeah. Nice, nice man putting on a, a war movie. And um, he, uh, I, I got an interview through this agent with him. Yeah. And he said, uh, this guy said to me, what have you done? And I said, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> you know, nothing. I just, you know, got a job. And he said, uh, did Henry sent you here? And I said, yes. And he said, um, do you know what that suggests? And I said, no. What do you mean? And he said, any place he sends you uh, is going to mean that you and he are have a relationship that is uh, beneficial to him. As oh, well. wow. And I said, he said, is that the case? And I said, no, it's not. And he said, well, uh, as long as you're associated with him, that's what's going to be associated with you oh my and gosh thank you thank you very much for telling me that and i called the guy back and said thanks but no thanks um but he and, and he said the the agent said you you either cooperate with people like me or you'll get nowhere in the business oh my gosh i mean this is like you hear about this but to actually hear somebody that had this happen was this by the way, was this uh, uh, Rock Hudson's agent, uh, Henry Wilson or whatever? Yes. Pretty famous? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Infamous. As it Infam out. Literally infamous. <laughs> That's yeah. a wild story, Mike. So what, so now what, you know, some people, they would be like, oh, okay, I'm done. I don't want to be around this. What, what, what was the next step that got you over the hump, so to speak? Um, the second part of my interview with Mike Farrell will be released very soon. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button and also make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you're notified when it gets released and when future episodes of That's Classic Episodes come out. Thanks again. Enjoy.